Good morning, dear students. Today in 12th Channel Physics, Unit 5, Electromagnetic Waves, we will be studying about in part 3. I have divided this part into three sections. In the first topic, we will be studying about the production of electromagnetic waves. Here, we will know about the great physicist Heinrich Hertz. He was successful in producing radio waves and also propagating radio waves. The second topic we will study about what produces electromagnetic waves whether a stationary charge produces electromagnetic waves or a charge with constant velocity produces electromagnetic waves or whether an oscillating charge produces electromagnetic waves. The third topic we will be studying about important eight properties of electromagnetic waves. At the end of the part there are some multiple choice questions. There are some uh, 10 multiple choice questions. I hope all of you will answer to these questions only if you are attentive in seeing this session. In part 3, we are going to study about production of electromagnetic waves, sources of electromagnetic waves and properties of electromagnetic waves. Topic 1 Production of electromagnetic waves. Maxwell predicted that a varying electric field produces a varying magnetic field in 1864. Heinrich Rudolf Hertz, a German physicist, experimentally confirmed Maxwell's prediction in 1888. He applied Maxwell's theories to the production and reception of radio waves. Maxwell proposed the theoretical idea of electromagnetic waves, but it was Heinrich Hertz who experimentally verified what Maxwell predicted. In fact, the unit of frequency, that is Hertz, is named in honor of Heinrich Hertz. This is a picture showing Hertz experiment. This is the experimental setup for the production of radio waves. The experimental setup consists of two metal electrodes. These two metal electrodes are connected to larger spheres. They are also made of metals. And the end of the larger spheres are connected to an induction coil. This is an induction coil. And the induction coil is connected to a cell or a battery. Here there is an on off switch. At some distance away is a receiver. The receiver is a ring type metal. It also consists of two metal electrodes. Now what Hurt observed was that whenever the switch was kept on and released immediately, there was a spark in the transmitter. At the same time, there was a spark seen at the receiver end. So what Hertz confirmed was that the spark at the transmitter was also seen at the receiver because energy was transmitted from the transmitter to the receiver in the form of radio waves. This is the schematic diagram of Hertz experiment. The input is given to the induction coil. The input here is the battery or the cell. It is given to the induction coil. The induction coil is connected to the transmitter part and there is a receiver part. Let us see in detail about Hertz experiment as it is given in the textbook. It consists of two metal electrodes which are made of small spherical metals. So these are the two metal electrodes. This one acts as the anode and this one acts as a cathode. These are connected to larger spheres. So, the metal electrodes are connected to larger spheres. The ends of them are connected to induction coil with very large number of turns. The so ends of the metals are connected to an induction coil with very large number of turns. Why an induction coil with very large number of turns is used? Because the inductance depends on the number of turns. 
If you increase the number of terms, the inductance of the coil will increase. Here in the input, there is a cell with a switch. When the switch is kept on and released immediately, the time duration is very very short, but the current that flows through the coil is very large. So, dI by dt is very large and also the inductance of the coil is large. So, the EMF of the coil becomes large. So, this produces a very high electromotive force in the coil. Because of this high EMF or high electromotive force in the induction coil, the coil is maintained at very high potential. So, here there will be a very high potential or a very high voltage. This high voltage will be dropped across the two metal electrodes. Now, if this voltage here is greater than T into 10 to the power of 6 volt, the air in the space between the two electrodes gets ionized, which means the air molecules will be split into positive ions and negative ions and there will be a discharge of electricity from the anode to the cathode. So, a spark is produced. This spark affects another electrode at the receiver which is kept far away. So, here there is a spark. At the same time, there is a spark in the receiver end. There is no connection between the transmitter and the receiver. So, how does the spark in the transmitter produce a spark in the receiver? Hertz concluded that energy is transmitted from the transmitter to the receiver in the form of electromagnetic waves. So, electromagnetic waves carry energy from the transmitter to the receiver. The electromagnetic waves that Hertz produced was radio waves. Now, if the receiver is rotated by 90 degree, if the receiver here is rotated by 90 degree, there is no spark in the receiver. Even if there is a spark in the transmitter, the receiver will not produce a spark. So, this confirms that electromagnetic waves are transverse in nature. Conclusion of Hertz experiment Hertz confirmed that electromagnetic waves are transverse as predicted by Maxwell. He detected radio waves. He computed the speed of radio waves as equal to the speed of light that is equal to 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second. Topic 2 Sources of Electromagnetic Waves In this, we are going to see what produces electromagnetic waves. Any stationary charge produces only electric field. There is an electric field around a positive charge. There is an electric field around a negative charge. There is no magnetic field around a stationary charge. So, a stationary charge or a charge which is at rest does not produce electromagnetic wave. When the charge moves with uniform velocity, it produces steady current. Here, the negatively charged electrons are moving with uniform velocity. Because of this, there is a steady current flowing in the circuit. Now, this current gives rise to a magnetic field around the conductor. Whenever there is a current flowing in a conductor, there are magnetic field lines around the conductor. These magnetic field lines are space dependent. That is, the magnetic field strength decreases with increase in distance. Here, the magnetic field strength is high. As the distance increases, the magnetic field strength becomes less. So, a charge moving with uniform velocity does not produce electromagnetic wave. 
so we saw that a stationary charge or a charge which is at rest does not produce electromagnetic waves and also when the charge moves with a constant velocity it does not produce electromagnetic waves now we shall consider what happens in the space between the two metal electrodes in the hers experiment these are the two metal electrodes they are given very high potential when the potential is greater than 3 into 10 to the power of 6 volt what happens here the air gets ionized so this is the ionization of air the air molecules are split into positive charges and negative charges and these charges are not stationary they are in oscillatory motion now we are going to consider a pair of charges a positive charge and a negative charge and let us see what the oscillation of this molecular dipole produces now we shall consider a molecular dipole this is a positive charge and this is a negative charge the positive and negative charges are separated by a small distance we know that electric field starts from positive charge and ends at negative charge now the molecular dipole is oscillating see how the strength of the electric field changes and also the direction of the electric field changes now we can plot the change in the electric field with respect to time in a graph in this position the positive charge is here and the negative charge is here so the electric field line from positive to negative and this and the direction of electric field is upwards here the positive charge is downwards the negative charge is up so the blue line denotes the strength of the electric field it is acting upwards this position is marked here after some time the negative charge comes down and the positive charge is going up now what happens to the strength of the electric field it decreases the direction is upwards this position is marked here here the negative charge comes down the positive charge goes up at this position the electric field strength is zero this position is marked here here the negative charge goes down and the positive charge goes up so the electric field direction is downwards and the strength is given by the blue line it is plotted here once again the positive charge reaches here negative charge goes here and the blue line denotes the strength of the electric field and the direction is downwards the position is marked here in this manner we can mark the strength of the electric field and its direction with respect to time in a graph so it is clear that an oscillating molecular dipole produces a varying electric field with respect to time now let us see how to plot a varying magnetic field with respect to time when a current flows in a conductor there is a magnetic field around it according to right hand rule the magnetic field b is always perpendicular to the electric field e here in this case the electric field is upwards the magnetic field is perpendicular and outwards the screen here also the electric field is upwards the magnetic field has a strain strength same strength as the electric field and it is going outwards the screen here the electric field is zero and the magnetic field is zero in this position the electric field is acting downwards so the magnetic field is acting into the screen and also perpendicular to the electric field in this way we can plot the magnetic field with respect to time so an oscillating charge produces a time varying magnetic field and also a time varying electric field 
This is the important point. Oscillating charges produce electromagnetic waves. We saw that stationary charges do not produce electromagnetic waves. A charge that moves with constant velocity does not produce electromagnetic waves, but oscillating charges produce electromagnetic waves. Here, the molecular dipole is oscillating about its mean position. We know that any oscillatory motion is also an accelerated motion. Here the charges are accelerated. At the mean position, the velocity is maximum. At the extreme position, the velocity is zero. So that is a change in velocity. So any oscillatory motion is also an accelerated motion. So any accelerated charge, whether it is a positive charge or a negative charge, is a source of electromagnetic waves. So, oscillating charges or accelerated charges produce electromagnetic waves. This is an electromagnetic wave. The electric field vector is along the x direction. The magnetic field vector is along the y direction. Now E0 is the amplitude of oscillating electric field that is the maximum displacement is called as the amplitude. Similarly B0 is the amplitude of oscillating magnetic field. Now the wavelength is the distance between successive two successive crest. This is the wavelength. Now we are going to write equations for electric field and magnetic field. Equation for electric field Ex is equal to E0 sin Kz minus omega t Since electric field is along the x direction, we are writing Ex. E0 is the amplitude of the oscillating electric field. Equation for magnetic field is given by By. Since Magnetic field is along the y direction, we are writing By. So, By is equal to B0 sin Kz minus omega t. Now, K is the wave number, K. K is equal to 2 pi by lambda. Lambda is the wavelength. Omega is the angular frequency of the wave. Omega is equal to 2 pi f. f is the frequency of the wave. That is number of waves produced in one second. K vector is a propagation vector. Since the electromagnetic wave is propagating or traveling in the z direction, K is the unit vector along the z direction. So, K is a propagation vector. Now, if suppose the electromagnetic wave is traveling in free space. If you want to know the velocity of the electromagnetic wave, then you have to divide the amplitude of the oscillating electric field by the amplitude of the oscillating magnetic field. If you divide these two quantities, then you will get the velocity of the electromagnetic wave. In free space, the velocity is equal to the velocity of light. Now, if the electromagnetic wave is traveling in any other medium and if you want to find the velocity of the electromagnetic wave in that medium, the same formula you should apply. That is, the amplitude of the, electro, of the electric field divided by the amplitude of the magnetic field will give the velocity of the electromagnetic wave in that medium. You know that the velocity of the electromagnetic wave in any medium will always be less than the velocity of light. Consider a charged particle oscillating about the mean position. Suppose the frequency of the oscillating charge is equal to 10 Hz. That is, it makes 10 oscillations in one second. Then the same frequency will be the frequency of the electromagnetic wave, the frequency of oscillation of the magnetic field, and the frequency of oscillation of the electric field. 
so the electric field wave the magnetic field wave and the electromagnetic wave all oscillate with the frequency of the oscillating charge the seventh and final point the oscillating charge provides energy for the electromagnetic wave only this oscillating charge will give energy to the electromagnetic wave topic 3 properties of electromagnetic waves first property electromagnetic waves are produced by any accelerated charge second point electromagnetic waves do not require any medium for propagation they can travel even in empty space or vacuum so they are non mechanical waves third point electromagnetic waves are transverse in nature that is the electric field the magnetic field and the direction of propagation of the wave all are mutually perpendicular to each other fourth point the electromagnetic waves travel with speed of light that is equal to 3 into 10 to the power of 8 meter per second in vacuum so the speed of light is given by c is equal to 1 divided by square root of epsilon not mu not epsilon not is a permittivity of free space and mu not is a permeability of free space you know the value of these epsilon not and mu not in previous lessons fifth point the speed of electromagnetic waves v in any medium is less than its speed c in free space or vacuum v is less than c so for a refractive index n the speed of the electromagnetic wave in free space divided by the speed of the electromagnetic wave in any medium will give the value of square root of epsilon r mu r where epsilon r is a relative permittivity of the medium and mu r is a relative permeability of the medium sixth point electromagnetic waves can exhibit interference diffraction and polarization you will study about these three phenomena in volume 2 the interference of light is observed in the soap bubble the diffraction of light is observed in compact disc and polarization is used to form polarized sunglasses seventh point electromagnetic waves are not deflected by electric field or magnetic field why they are not deflected because electromagnetic waves do not have charges the charges will be oscillating in one place and the electromagnetic waves are just carriers of energy so electromagnetic waves are not deflected by electric field or magnetic field eighth and final point electromagnetic waves carry energy linear momentum and angular momentum evaluation first question the dimension of 1 divided by mu not epsilon not is we know that the velocity of light c is equal to 1 divided by square root of mu not epsilon not the dimension of velocity is given by l t minus 1 to remove the square root we square on both sides of the equation so c square is equal to 1 divided by mu not epsilon not the dimension of c square is l square t minus 2 so the dimension of 1 divided by mu not epsilon not is l square t minus 2 so the answer is option b l square t minus 2 second question 
if the amplitude of the magnetic field is 3 into 10 to the power of minus 6 tesla then the amplitude of the electric field for an electromagnetic wave is the given quantity is the amplitude of magnetic field that is B naught equals 3 into 10 to the power of minus 6 T. They are asking for the amplitude of electric field. So E naught equals how much? We know the formula velocity of light C equals E naught by B naught. So substituting the value of velocity of light and B naught we will be getting the answer for the amplitude of electric field. So the answer is option D 900 volt meter minus 1. Third question the electric and magnetic fields of an electromagnetic wave are here in this picture both the electric field and magnetic field start from 0 both of them reach maximum at the same time and reach 0 at the same time and both of them reach maximum in the reverse direction at the same time and also both the electric field and the magnetic field are perpendicular to each other. So option A, the in phase and perpendicular to each other is the correct one. The electric and magnetic fields associated with an electromagnetic wave propagating along negative x axis can be represented by well, the given information is electromagnetic wave travel along negative x axis. So electromagnetic waves are traveling along negative x axis. Here I cap is a unit vector along x axis. J cap is a unit vector along y axis and K cap is a unit vector along Z axis. Here in the first choice, the electric field is shown as traveling along the X axis. So this option is wrong. In option C also, the electric field is traveling along the X axis. Here it is positive X axis. Here also it is positive X axis. So option A and C are wrong. And in option D, the magnetic field is traveling along the x direction. This is also wrong. Only the electromagnetic wave is traveling along the negative x axis. So, in option B, the electric field is traveling along z axis and the magnetic field is traveling along y axis. So, the correct option is option B. Fifth question, in an electromagnetic wave traveling in free space, the RMS value of the electric field is 3 volt meter minus 1. The peak value of the magnetic field. What is the given quantity? The RMS value of electric field is given. It is E RMS equal to 3 volt meter minus 1. What is the relation between RMS value and the peak value? E RMS equals E naught by square root of 2. So from here we will get the value of E naught. The asked quantity is B naught. The peak value of magnetic field is asked. So we know the formula C equals E naught by B naught. So substituting the values of C and E naught, we will get the value of B naught. So the option A is correct. Sixth question, an electromagnetic wave is propagating in a medium with a velocity V vector equals V i cap. The instantaneous oscillating electric field of this electromagnetic wave is along positive y axis. Then the direction of the oscillating magnetic field of the electromagnetic wave will be along so what are the given informations? The electromagnetic wave is along positive x-axis. The oscillating electric field is along positive y-axis. 
So what is the direction of the oscillating magnetic field? It is along. The positive is a direction. So option C, positive is a direction is correct. Seventh question. Which of the following is used to produce a propagating electromagnetic wave? An accelerating charge or an oscillating charge only can produce electromagnetic wave. So the option A is correct. Eighth question. Which of the following is not true for electromagnetic waves? Electromagnetic waves transport energy, momentum and angular momentum. So these three options are true for electromagnetic waves. What is not true? In vacuum or free space, it travels with different speeds which depend on your frequency. We know that electromagnetic waves travel with the same speed in vacuum. So option D is not true for electromagnetic waves. Dear students, in today's class, we discussed about the production of electromagnetic waves, the sources of electromagnetic waves and the properties of electromagnetic waves. All the questions that are marked here cover today's topic. All these questions are very important, especially this question. Write down the properties of electromagnetic waves could be asked in 2 marks or 3 marks also. So students, go through the textbook and prepare answers for these questions. Dear students, I hope all of you have answered the multiple choice questions. Kindly don't omit the calculation part in the multiple choice questions. It is also equally important and also the questions that are marked in the 2 marks and 3 marks and also 5 marks are also equally important. Don't omit any of these questions in study. Till then, Take care and be safe.